All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about two games. All right, let's talk about the Raptors versus the 76ers and the Nuggets versus the Warriors. Both games occurred uh, after her. Um, the Timberwolves versus the Grizzlies game. And I want to peel back the curtain a bit, all right? I don't like doing this normally. I like being professional and having a barrier between the listener and me, but I have to be honest. I did not really watch either of the last two games. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I'm not going to sit here and be like, so Joel and B really submitted his MVP case. I, I, I didn't watch it. I mean, I was watching... But I was also on the phone and tweeting, okay? <laughs> like, because it wasn't really interesting, to be real. Um, you know, the hot the high paced, you know, fast energy of you know the Timberwolves and the and the Grizzlies, it was endearing. And, you know, it was interesting. And I wanted to see what was gonna happen because I was so ready for this matchup and I was so ready to see the Grizzlies in a high leverage playoff situation and you know, I wanted to see Ant and Anthony, you know, Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns. I wanted to see how they were going to perform under these bright lights after a very amazing playing game. But I was excited for the 76ers and the Raptors, but the 76ers thrashed the Raptors, 111 to 131. It, it wasn't really too much to talk about. I mean, I have like a theory about James Harden that I can share with you if you would like me to, but um, Tyrese Maxey had a career game. Like Tyrese Maxey scored 38 points. Tyrese Maxey has gotten the 2018 James Harden powers because Tyrese Maxey was going federal, boy. Tyrese Maxey, five three-pointers, 38 points, four, four rebounds, two assists, 66% from the field, shooting 14 of 21. Tyrese Maxey is going to be an X factor for the 76ers if they want to make a deep playoff run. After seeing this game, at least the glimpses that I really was truly watching because also the fact that the Grizzlies game was ending and I wanted to see how it ended. And then the 76ers game was starting with ESPN two. It sort of had me discombobulated because I wanted to see how uh, the Grizzlies game ended. And, you know, it sort of messed up the start um, of the 76ers versus Raptors game, but the 76ers were leading from the start. Joel Embiid didn't really have a monstrous game. He played 37 minutes, but they didn't really need him towards the end. I mean, because, for, like, like for the most part, they were blowing them out, you know. Um, they, they, they were blowing them out. Now, Joel had five personal fouls. That's also a reason why he didn't play all that much. I mean, Joel needs to cut that out because Joel is the offense. And when these games become more high leverage, when let's say the Raptors come to play game two, you know, let's say that they play the Heat or the Hawks in the next round, and now it's a real close game. Uh, they're going to need Joel Embiid, and Joel Embiid can't get into foul trouble. So that's something that he's really going to have to watch. But – I know that when the lights are the brightest, Joel Embiid is going to play well. James Harden, here's my theory on James Harden. Well, wait, before I talk about James Harden, as a matter of fact, man, Tobias Harris, can I get a hand clap for Tobias Harris? Because y'all have desecrated that man all year. He had 26 points, six rebounds, and six assists on nine of 14 shooting, 64.3% from the field, and he made three three-pointers, got to the line six times, was five of six. Y'all have destroyed that man all year. Y'all have put him in so many hypothetical trade scenarios. Y'all are saying this man's contract is terrible, so he's going to be trade bait for someone. And he is playing like really the second guy, with James Harden being the third guy. So shout out to him. And then Matisse Thibel made a three-pointer. Now, granted, he ain't going to make no threes in Toronto because he's unvaccinated. Okay, but he made a three-pointer, so shout out to him, plays with good defense. You know, Niang came in, he did his thing, hit two three-pointers, and then Shake Milton, my dog. Shake, I mean, if, if y'all don't remember, when Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons were injured, I think this was like the 2018-2019 season, he had a stretch of games where I was like, yo, this man legit, this man might be a rising star. Philadelphia might be holding him back. But it's great to see that Shake Milton is getting, you know, high leverage playoff minutes and he's a producer on a playoff team because Shake Milton is the truth. I, like He's quick. He's elusive. I really like Shake. All right. But let me just give you my theory on James Harden. So James Harden stat line, 22 points, five rebounds, 14 assists, and he was six of 17 from the field, 35 percent, and he made four out of seven three pointers. I think that what we're seeing is we're seeing James Harden leave his prime. I think that the weight gain 
and his hamstring injury exacerbated it. But I believe that we're seeing the rapid decline of James Harden. And at this point, James Harden is who he is. And you're not going to be able to change him. Gone are the days of James Harden getting 50 points and 20 assists. Gone are the days of James Harden blowing past you and either getting fouled or dunking on you or getting the layup. Gone are, are, are the days of the game winners where he shoots on two different people and falls down and gets a four-point play. Those days are gone. That James Harden is in Houston. His, his jersey was retired in the strip club. He has gone on. And, and the James Harden that you saw when he first got with the Brooklyn Nets, that was before the hamstring injury. I think the hamstring injury did a lot to James Harden and him playing on it. But also, I just don't believe he has that quick first step anymore. And now he's more of a facilitator. He's more of almost like your Chris Paul type of player. He still can get to the line and draw fouls with the best of them. And he still is an adept three-point shooter. That is who you have. And to be honest, James Harden in this state is better than Ben Simmons was when he was in Philadelphia. Now, granted, James Harden is not the defender of Ben Simmons. Like, Ben Simmons is an amazing defender. James Harden is not. However, one thing I can say about James Harden is that James Harden has big game potential. James Harden might go out there and start and, and, and get, you know, get his shot going. And he'll get 35 points just like that. We saw him have flashes of it in Brooklyn. We saw him have flashes of it with Philadelphia. So I believe that you're going to see James Harden score in the low 20s and get 14, 15 assists and set his teammates up. When I was watching the game, I, I was watching first quarter. All I saw was James Harden driving to the basket, collapsing the defense and kicking it out to Tobias Harris, making sure that Maxie got shots, passing it to Joel Embiid and let him do his work. I think that James Harden is going to be a great facilitator for this Philadelphia team. And to be honest, I don't think that's bad. I believe that we're holding James Harden to a standard that he just cannot live up to anymore. He is a top 75 player. He was one of the best offensive players of all time when he was in Houston. And it was a real debate on who was the better offensive player between Kobe and James Harden. At some points, it seemed blasphemous, but it was a real debate. And people had good points when it came to it. But that James Harden is left. Because that James Harden prided itself on quickness, athleticism, and skill. And I think the quickness and the athleticism is gone. But what James Harden has always been is a great playmaker and a great passer. And you saw in Houston, he was able to always find the open three-point shooter, especially in that Mike D'Antoni system. Now, maybe if Mike D'Antoni ends up coaching the 76ers again, or coaching James Harden again and coaching the 76ers, maybe we'll see the old James Harden again. But I just don't see it. I honestly don't. I think that James Harden is what he is. But if he's able to produce at this level, if he can get me 22 points, maybe 25, maybe give me a game where you go for 30 or 35. You don't got to give me 40 or 50 or 60. That's what Joel Embiid is for. Joel Embiid is, is the scoring champion this year. Joel Embiid will get me that. I just need you to take a little bit of the playmaking load off of Joel Embiid. I need you to, you to get Tobias Harris rolling so he can give me 26 points if you're giving me 22. And I need you to, to help mentor and train up Tyrese Maxey so he can be a beast offensive player because that's the next guy. Because Tyrese Maxey has crazy potential. And if James Harden really is showing him the tools of the trade and showing him how to do the step back and all his different moves, that's going to be good for his career. And that's going to be good for the 76ers because as James, as James Harden continues to decline, Tyrese Max is going to rise. So I think it's fine what James Harden is. I think we have to accept people for what they are and who they are. That's one thing I've learned from therapy. That's one thing I've learned from growth. You cannot change people. You have to look, you have to be able to analyze who they are and then acquiesce to what they're giving you. So I'm not going to expect 30, 40 points from James Harden because that's not what he's been. So I think we need to stop putting this big game, oh, all the pressure is on James Harden. James Harden is a second or third guy. He is the facilitator. He's the Jason Kidd of this group. Joel Embiid is, is the superstar. James Harden said, listen, I have turned in my superstar card. I am now a, a primary facilitator. I'm going to get the ball to 
to Joel Embiid. I'm going to get the ball to Maxi. I'm going to get the shooters open. And if I need to, I'll drive in and get a layup. I'll use my IQ to get a good shot. Or I'll just get in, and when I need to, I'll get fouled, and I'll get my points from there. That's what that's what I think James Harden is. Now, granted, James Harden only, only had seven free throw attempts and made six of them. That's interesting, okay? But <laughs> Joel B only, only had 11, by the way. So I think that that may be the playoff officiating. Uh, they didn't really give them all, the, all those whistles that they normally get. However, I just think that you're seeing the new version of James Harden. So welcome him to the NBA. And, you know, this is the new James Harden, guys. Get used to it. Don't get upset when he doesn't give you monster numbers. He's a facilitator that can score. He is he is a better version of Jason Kidd. He's Chris Paul in this stage where Chris Paul's with the Phoenix Suns. That is who he is. Let him be him. But you might get one game where James Harden says, man, I'm going to turn back the clock to 2017, 2018, and I'm going to get 50. He might give you that one day, all right? But let's talk about the reigning MVP and how... To me, now, I'm not an analytics guy, all right? I am an eye test guy, but I like analyzing the really the basic stats. Like, I look at the box score. I look at points, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks. You know, I, I look at those numbers, and I look at the stats from that from the box score, and I believe it tells me the story of the game. I'm a storyteller. I'm an author. I'm a writer. I love reading. I'm a big fan of the story. And if you, you probably have seen it or heard it, you know, as you listen to the podcast. So I'm a storyteller. So when I see the tell of the tape, and I see that the Golden State Warriors had 32 points to Denver's 20. When I see that, what that tells me is that nobody for Denver was scoring. And that's going to be the problem in the playoffs for the Nuggets. Now, listen, I don't believe that Nikola Jokic should be MVP for a second year. I think that both Joel Embiid and Giannis had a better season than him, and Devin Booker was a main producer on a contender, on the number one team in the NBA. So I believe that all of those players should have some credits in this MVP argument. I understand Jokic puts up great advanced stats, but he just doesn't pass the eye test. And y'all swear that in losses, if someone scores 100 points in a loss, it's empty stats. These advanced stats seem rather empty to me. I mean, I don't have the full advanced stats in front of me, but Nikola Jokic in 34 minutes had 25 points, 10 rebounds, six assists, three steals. He shot 12, 25, 40. He shot 48% from the field. He made zero three pointers and they lost 107 to 123. I, I mean, what, what do I do with this? Like, what do I do with this information, man? I mean, he had a great year, but is he, re and I understand he doesn't, he doesn't have the guys. I understand Jamal Murray's out. I understand that his second best player is Aaron Gordon. Like you got, you got Bones Highland, you know, you have, you have DeMarcus Cousins, Will Barton, Will Barton like was second behind him in points. I get it. I get it. He doesn't have Michael Porter Jr. He doesn't have Jamal Murray, but I just don't see what y'all see in, in, in Jokic. He makes great passes, has a great IQ. But I just don't see why the internet goes crazy over him and why the media is forcing us to have this level of respect for him where now he's a two-time MVP. I just don't see it. And I believe that we all have this view of Jokic because of his massive success in winning MVPs and winning these awards over our favorite players. And that's it. That, that, that's what it is. I, I'll be honest. That's what it is. I don't think he's a bad guy. You know, I, I I like his style of play because I like guys that can think the game. As a fan of Chris Paul, as a fan of LeBron James, as a current fan of Trey Young, I like guys that can think the game. I like guys with high IQ. And Nikola Jokic has a high IQ, but he's not a two-time MVP. And I don't believe that in this current ideation of the team, even when Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. come back, I just don't believe that they're going to be a contender in the West. If the Timberwolves continue on this trajectory, if the Grizzlies continue on this trajectory, if the Suns finally break through and either make the finals again or win a championship and Devin Booker finally hits his prime, I just think that the Nuggets are going to be the perennial sixth seed because Luka's coming too. 
Who's to say the Rockets don't finally get it together? Like, I don't know. Who's to say the Thunder don't finally get it together? They get pa- Paolo Brancaro or Chet Holmgren or A.J. Griffin, and, and they just start turning up. Who, who's to say that that doesn't happen? I'm just not sold on the Nuggets led by Jokic as the primary guy as contenders in the West. I could be wrong. I would be happy to be wrong. But I just don't buy him as that. And in this game, all I saw was them creating a scheme to make it hard for Jokic to have those monster numbers. He still had 10 rebounds. He still had six assists. But he didn't have those typical monster numbers that you saw in the regular season. And because of that, the Warriors won. Jordan Poole had 30 points. Jordan Poole hit five three-pointers. Andrew Wiggins, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green all win double figures. And Steph Curry in 21 minutes coming off the bench had 16 points and he made three three three-pointers. The Nuggets are going to get swept. There's nothing they can do. They don't have the tools. They Like, Jokic is not going to really help on defense all that much. And they're going to start hunting him. And mind you, you have to realize that Steph Curry was coming off of the bench. And he's been out for a month. You have to realize that. Because he went out when Marcus Mark ran into his foot and hurt him trying to die for a loose ball. That happened on March the 16th. So Steph Curry missed the rest of the regular season. He's just come back a month later, like almost to the time, almost a month later. Imagine if Steph Curry was really going and Steph had around maybe 25, 26 points somewhere around the realm, the realm of Jordan Poole. This game would have been ugly. It would have been over from the start. Clay Thompson, 19 points, made five three-pointers. Draymond Green made made a a three-pointer. And Draymond Green was buying up Jokic, and he would not be moved. And I think that he was playing pretty good defense on Jokic. Had a great season, but it's going to end early. And he's going to accept his MVP award from home. And that's fine, because I, I'm not the, oh, you got to win the finals every year guy. I, I, and, and I think that if the Nuggets make some moves and Jamal Murray comes back, Michael Porter comes back, and you get some other guys in there, maybe they, they can contend, and I'll be wrong. But I just don't see it. Did I really watch this game? No, I was on Twitter. <laughs> like, I was doing other stuff. I'm not going to lie to you. But from what I saw when I was watching, Jokic has no chance. But just like LeBron didn't have a chance, Jokic is going to go down as one of the top 100 greatest players of all time when that list comes out. He might be top 50. He might be top 25. Jokic is going to be a transcendent player. I think he's going to be a face of the league. But I think we need to pump the brakes on him a little bit. Because we're allowing him to leapfrog some folks. Like, we're allowing him to leapfrog Giannis a little bit. Jokic is not the best player in the league. Is he one of them? He is. But he's not the best. And I want to make that point because how y'all are treating him like y'all are dismissing the other folks that are killing the game. Y'all are dismissing them. Joel Embiid is not better than Nikola Jokic in the totality of the scheme of the game. Like, when I look at, not even stats, when I look at just the skill set that Nikola Jokic has, he is slightly better than Joel Embiid to me. But this year, Joel Embiid has been better. They essentially, for half the season, had the exact same supporting cast, and the 76ers really had worse. And then James Harden has not been, like, 2018 James Harden, like I said. So Joel Embiid had to still put up monster numbers to get his team into the top four in the East. The 76ers should have been a play-in team. The 76ers should have been the sixth seed. They should be playing Giannis and the Bucs instead of the Bulls. But you want to know why they're not in that position? In a tougher conference this year? Where all where everyone that made the playoff field, including the play-in, all of them had a winning record? You can't say that for the West this year. The East was tough. They beat each other up in the East. A lot of great players, a lot of great coaches, and and a lot of great basketball being played in in the Eastern Conference nowadays. So Joel Embiid was in a tougher conference, and he led his team by himself to the fourth seed. And you have to realize also that Joel Embiid, in November, he contracted COVID. He was out for, I would say, maybe, was it 10 games? I know he was out for 10 days. Was it 10 games? It was a lot of games that he missed, and the 76ers struggled. What if he never caught COVID? 
and he continued to play in that stretch. And they got maybe five or six more wins, and they move up. Maybe they're the number one seed. Maybe they're playing the Hawks. Maybe they're maybe they're the number two seed, and we finally get you know Durant and Kyrie versus Harden. Maybe that would have happened. Maybe. But I don't know because we won't get a chance to see it because we're talking about hypotheticals. But when I look at the tell of the season, Joel Embiid was the better player this year. To career stats, event stats, PER, all these different stats, I can't say that. I think Nikola Jokic has them. But on a year-by-year basis, and this year especially, Joel Embiid was better. And I guess we'll see what happens in the playoffs because that's where the narratives really get started. So I think it's really going to be on Jokic. I don't want to put pressure on the brother, but it's going to be on Jokic to really produce and to really show us he's that guy. And I understand it's hard, but y'all put this same pressure on LeBron James. I don't want to put it on him, but y'all did. <laughs> y'all did it. So, I mean, I want to see what he does. I mean, you know, you got you got some guys, you know. Hey, I mean, you got some guys. I mean, you got you, 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 got, you got my boy Will Barton at 24 points. I'm just saying. Hit two three-pointers. You got my guy. You know what I'm saying? You got Monte Morris, 10 points. He, he, he can get a bucket for you. DeMarcus Cousins got Marcus Cousins got ejected, but DeMarcus Cousins can still get a bucket for you. So, I mean, you, you got some guys. Yeah, more than LeBron did in 2018. Go make it happen. I'm just saying. But I want to see what happens. I might, like, I, I'll do, let me, let me meet Jokic in the middle. I think that he won't get swept. I think that Jokic will get one game. He'll have a statistically great game, almost perfect game, and they'll still a win. I want to, they might still game two. I don't know. Or they, they, they might win one at home, but he's going home in either four or five games. He doesn't have the tools. I don't think he's the guy that y'all are making him out to be, to just be this world beater. I don't think he's that guy. I believe he's one of the better players, but he ain't that guy. And I think that pretty soon we're all going to see it. And I do believe that when he wins this second straight MVP, we'll look back years from now, just like how we did in hindsight with, with Russell Westbrook. Although I don't think that that was a bad MVP win. Um, we're going to look back and we're going to say, man, just like with Steve Nash, we really gave Nikola Jokic two MVPs. And it's going to be folks that, that defend it. Just like how there's folks that defend the Steve Nash win, although it's less. There's going to be more people defending Jokic winning two straight MVPs. But at the same time, we're going to look back and be like, wow, it was so much great basketball being played in the 75th season of the NBA. And we gave it to a guy that didn't make it out the first round, that didn't really pass the eye test. He made some good passes. He had some amazing stats. But Joel Embiid really contributed to winning in a real way. Joel Embiid had to deal with a bunch of drama with Ben Simmons, and he still led his team to the playoffs in a high seed in a tougher conference. Giannis really took a leap. Giannis started hitting three-pointers. Like Giannis really became that guy. Like, like Giannis really started to hit the pinnacle of his prime and started to become unstoppable in 2022. But we didn't reward that. Devin Booker what, what, what was a producer, a scorer, a leader, on probably the eventual NBA champion Phoenix Suns. But we're not going to reward that. We're not, we're not going to give it to him. We're going to give it to the guy that puts up a bunch of stats. That's how it looks to me. Hey, listen, y'all can go in on me, but that's how it looks to me.